Hey everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I know that some of you are moving from Lightroom Classic to the cloud version of Lightroom. The reason why I know that is I've been receiving more and more questions regarding the cloud version of Lightroom. One question I recently received was from a photographer who told me that they have a very specific workflow with Lightroom Classic and they're having a difficult time translating that workflow to the cloud version of Lightroom. And they asked me if I could do a video demonstrating my workflow when using the cloud version of Lightroom. So in today's video, I'm going to show you my workflow when using the cloud version of Lightroom. One thing I want to mention, my main application that I still use is Lightroom Classic, except when I'm traveling. When I travel, I bring along a MacBook and I prefer to use the cloud version of Lightroom on my MacBook. The reason for that is I mainly use Lightroom Classic on my iMac and I keep all of my images on two external hard drives. When I travel, if I wanted to do that same thing, I would somehow have to share the catalog and bring along a couple external hard drives. And I don't want to do that. It's much easier for me to use the cloud version of Lightroom on my MacBook. And then when I get back, I transfer all of those images and the edits I did on those images to Lightroom Classic. And in a future video, I'll show you how I do that. So what I'll do first, when I'm on my MacBook and I'm traveling is I don't open up Lightroom. What I actually do is I plug in the memory card and you can see in my iMac, I'm doing this video on my iMac, I have a Nikon Z8 memory card plugged in. What I'll do then is I'll drill down to where the images are on the memory card. You can see I have a number of Nikon RAW files here. Next thing I'll do is I'll open a folder on the local drive on my MacBook where I want to put all these images. I'm going to do that a little bit differently in this video because I am working on my iMac. Instead of going to the local drive, I'm going to go to one of the external hard drives I have plugged into the system. You can see I have a lot. Probably should get a NAS someday. So I'm going to put them on this hard drive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder on this hard drive. And you could call the folder anything you want. I'm just going to call it Photos. And then you could sort your images any way you want. But the way I'm going to sort them is by year location, and then day. So I have my photos folder on this external hard drive. I'll open that up. I'm going to create a folder inside of this folder. And I'm going to call it 2024. And then I'm going to open that up. And then these images were taken this morning at a place called Hamburg Beach. So I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to give it the name Hamburg Beach. And that's the way they spell it. And then I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put today's date. And I'm just going to create a new folder and it's 03. I'm going to use backslash, although I think Lightroom won't show a backslash. It will show a colon, but that's okay. It's 03. Uh, today's the 28th. So uh, there, and then click enter. Then I'll open this folder. Then what I'll do is I'll take all these Nikon raw files, click on the first one, hold the shift key down, click on the last one and just drag and drop them into that folder. So there's no import process like you have in Lightroom Classic. This is the way I do it. This is the way most photographers I know do it. They just drag and drop the images directly from the memory card to the folder they want the images to be in. And on my MacBook, it would be on the local drive, but on my iMac, I'm putting them on an external hard drive. So that's it. Then I'll eject my memory card. I just right click on it and go on eject. So that's ejected. Now I'll go to the cloud version of Lightroom and then I'll go to the local tab I'll go to browse and I'll just navigate to where they are. They're on this photos hard drive. They're in, I called the photo, the folder on that hard drive photos. Probably shouldn't have made it a little confusing. It's in the year 2024. It's in the folder Hamburg Beach and it's on this day. I click on it and you can see it populates the grid with all of these images. Now, I specifically took this images to do this video and it wasn't a very nice day to take photographs. So there's nothing spectacular here. I just want to warn you ahead of time. The next thing I'll do is call images. And calling in Lightroom, the cloud version of Lightroom, is a bit different than calling in, say, Lightroom Classic. In Lightroom Classic, uh, you have a feature called Auto Advance. You could turn that on in the menu, or you could just press in the caps lock key. And with um, Auto Advance, what you would do is you would, let's say, press in the caps lock key. And if you like an image, you would give it a pick flag by hitting the P key. And then the then Lightroom Classic would automatically advance you to the next image. And you could give that a pick 
or a reject flag is the X key, or no flag at all is the U key. So if you hit P, X, or U on an image, it will automatically advance you to the next image. Lightroom, though, the cloud version of Lightroom, doesn't have auto advance at all. Also, P isn't the keyboard shortcut for the pick flag. Z is, or Z. So you have to hit the Z key to auto or to flag an image. So let's say I liked this image. I would hit the Z key or Z key. And I gave it a flag. You can see at the bottom it has this pick flag, right? I could click down there as well and turn the flag off and on if I prefer to do it that way. Now, typically what I'll do is I'll go through the images and I'll just give pick flags to what I like. So I like this one, and let's say, for the sake of argument, I don't like that one. I would just skip it. I wouldn't give it a flag at all. I'd hit the right arrow key. And let's say I like this one, I'd give it the Z key to give it a pick. That's the way I do it. Well, what a lot of photographers do is something slightly different. They'll go up to this sort icon up here by the search bar, and they'll click on that sort icon. Then they'll go over here, and they want to look at all images that do not have any flag at all. Now, right now, in my film strip, I have two images that have flags. So as soon as I click on this, two images are going to disappear from the film strip, including the one I was viewing. So that's what they set up. Then what they'll do is they'll go through their images, and they'll use the Z or Z key and the X key. So this one I mentioned I didn't like. I'll hit the X key. You see it disappears and brings you to the next image. This one, let's say I like, I give it the Z key. This one I like Z key. This one I don't like X key, X key, X key, X key, X key, X key. Let's just for the sake of argument, Z key, X key, Z key, Z key, or Z key if you prefer. And let's say X key. All right, so now we have no images down in the film strip. Well, if you want to look at the ones you pick, turn off this flag and turn on your pick flag. Now, these are just the ones I hit the Z key with. If I want to see the ones I rejected, turn off that flag and then hit the reject flag up there and I can just see the ones I rejected. Now, I of course want to see just the ones I picked. Now I want to decide which one to edit. And I kind of like this one actually. Not that I like it that much. I mean, they're, none of them are great. But let's just say for the sake of argument, I like this one. Now I'll proceed to edit. Editing is all on the right-hand panel for those of you not familiar with the cloud version of Lightroom, and you can open up the edit panel right here. Now, I have my cloud version of Lightroom set up so that when I open up a panel, the opposite panel will close. So I'll open up the edit panel, and you notice the left panel closed. By default, Lightroom doesn't do that. If you want yours to do that, go up to Preferences. On a Mac, it's under the Adobe Lightroom menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. Open up Preferences and then go down to interface and right here panel tracks set it to automatic by default it'll be on manual if you like to close them manually yourself just leave it on manual so i'm going to edit this image now my editing workflow as far as the actual editing isn't different in the cloud version of lightroom compared to any other app the first thing i like to do is reduce noise now if i'm not mistaken this was shot with an iso 64 yeah so I don't really have to worry about noise, but that is the first thing I would do is reduce noise. The next thing I do, I would do is crop the image and I do need to crop this image. So I would open up the crop tool. Now I straighten it first before I crop it. And this to my eye looks slightly, slightly crooked, uh, but you would click this auto key, you could, this auto button. It's not really a button. It just says auto. You could click right there and you can see how it straightened it to plus 0.68. To me, that looks crooked. So I'll undo that. I'll hit Command or Control Z. But what I prefer to do is just come off the image a little bit. You'll get this kind of double curved arrow, and then I could just straighten it as I need be. Now, I do have the person in the scene on this right-hand vertical rule of thirds line. I have a lot of sky in the image, so I want to take away the sky. So I'm going to pull down from the top, and then I'm going to try to move them over more. So I'm going to tighten everything up quite a bit like that. Maybe if I could get away with a little more, I don't want to lose this. I don't want to cut off the windmill on the far left, but I have them now right at that intersection point. At least their head is there. So I like that. Uh, maybe it's a little too tight, but I'll go with that. And to commit to the crop, just click on the edit icon here to go back to editing mode. 
and you commit it to the crop. Now, after I do that, the next thing I like to do is my camera profile. And usually I stay with camera standard. But just for the sake of the demonstration, let's change to a different camera profile. What I'll do is I'll click this drop down. I'll go to browse, browse all profiles. I usually like to use a camera matching profile. Let's go with Vivid. So I'll just click on Vivid. And once I'm done with that, we'll just click the back key. And then I'll go back and continue my editing. After I do the profile, the next thing I'll do is white balance. So I'll go to color and I'll just white balance if needed. The white balance is fine on this image, so I'm not worried about that. After I do white balance, the next thing I'll edit is tone. Tone in the cloud version of Lightroom is under the light tab. So what I'll do is typically, you know, I'll just look at it. I'll bring highlights in, open up shadows a little bit, quite a bit actually. I'll get a white point by holding in the option key on my Mac, Alt key on a PC. When I click on this and start to move it, I'll get a black screen. You can see I'm already starting to clip some of these bright highlights down here where the water is reflecting or the light is reflecting off like the rocks and stuff. I'm not really worried though. I just don't want to like clip up in the sky there where I'm starting to clip now. That means I'm blowing out the highlights. I don't want to blow out the highlights typically. Same thing for blacks. I'll hold in the option key or Alt key. Click on the black slider. When I start to move it this time, the screen will turn white. Move this to the left, I see some color coming through. That means I'm starting to crush the shadows. There's absolute black in those areas. I don't mind having absolute black in the image. I typically will have a little bit of absolute black, but I don't like to blow out the highlights. So I like to bring it almost to clipping in the highlights and then back it off. Uh, that way when it prints, some ink gets put down there. If it was blown out, it was totally white. No ink would get put down there at all. That sometimes doesn't look right when you print it. Not that I would ever print this image there. Now, every now and then I'll add contrast, but not with the contrast slider. I prefer to use the tone curve. So to demonstrate that, I'll roll open the tone curve and I'm going to use the point curve. That's usually what I use. You could use anything you want, any type of curve you want, but I'll use the point curve. I put a point right in the middle. Then I put a point usually like right around here and then another one right around there. And then I'll go down here to this intersection right here and I'll put a point here and just pull down slightly. So I'm kind of making that darker area is a little darker. And then I'll go up here to this equivalent area on the right hand side. This is where the highlights live and I'll push that up a little. So I made the brighter parts a little brighter, dark parts a little darker. My definition, that is contrast. So that's good. So we're done with tone or curve and tone in general. So we'll close that down. Next I'll do color. Usually what I'll do is I'll go to saturation first and I'll move that to the right and see what that looks like. In this case here, it, the sand looks okay, but the wood that is on the sand looks oversaturated. So I'll undo this by double clicking on it and I'll go to vibrance then and push vibrance up a little. Now I'll continue on with color if need be on this image. I don't need to, but if I would want to do something with the color mixer, point color, color grading or color calibration, I would do that now. And by the way, if you don't see color calibration by default, it won't be here. Go to these three dots and make sure it has a check mark next to it. And if you're familiar with Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Classic, it's called camera calibration. Same exact thing. All right, so we're going to close down color. Next thing I'll do is masking. This image doesn't need really a lot of masking. There's nothing really up there in the sky. But let's just pretend there were clouds in the sky so I could show you my workflow. What I would do is I would go to masking and I would select the sky. Right? And then once it selects the sky, I will go to effects and I would add texture and clarity to the clouds in the sky. And then I would go to detail and I'd add sharpness to the clouds in the sky in this case there's no clouds so I don't have to worry about it. Then what I'll do is I'll look at something else I think needs to be masked and I like to maybe mask the beach and add some texture and or clarity to the beach. So we're going to add a new mask but this time I'm going to add an objects mask and I'll use the brush and I'll get a smaller brush by hitting left bracket key, right bracket key makes it bigger. And then I'm just going to kind of outline this beach and see if this works. I'll go this way. You don't really, you don't have to color the whole thing. You could try if you want. See what it does. And the new mask overlay, you could see it missed part of the beach here. So we need to add to it. I could have just used a brush right to begin with. And we're adding to it and we'll get a smaller brush. And we'll come in here and add to this 
area here, get a smaller brush and come in here and add to this area here. So basically I, I just want to, uh, add some texture and clarity to the beach. That's why I'm going through all this trouble. So I could have did that with the brush right to begin with. And we'll add some sharpness too while I'm here. We'll go to effects, we'll add some clarity and some texture. You can see how it's affecting all the sand basically and rocks there. And a uh, couple things I'll mention very quickly. Um, I'm done with masking by the way. So um, I'll go back to edit. Um, you might be tempted a lot of times to use in effects to use dehaze. It was a little bit of a hazy day. And what you'll often find is if you use dehaze, it will just make, especially if you have blue in the image, it'll make the blue too blue. You can see what it's doing there. And you don't, you don't care for that look. An alternative to dehaze is the light. I mentioned I don't often move the contrast slider, but if dehaze doesn't seem to be working well, I will go to the contrast slider, move that instead. That seems to do similar things that dehaze does, but not as heavy as dehaze. So that's what I'll use there. And finally, I'll finish this image up with a dark vignette by moving this to the left. By the way, if you don't see like all the sliders you're used to when you use Lightroom Classic for anything, just look to see if there's a little triangle next to it. That's called an expose triangle. Click on it. And you can see then we have all the sliders that you're used to when you're applying a vignette in Lightroom Classic. They're here. They're just behind this triangle. So you can just add your vignette that way. Change around midpoint. Whatever you want to do, you, you're able to do there. So there I've edited one image. Nothing spectacular. What I'll do though is I'll go down here and I'll copy the edit settings. So I just copied all my edits except for cropping to the clipboard. Then I'll go to this image and I'll paste the settings and you can see how it pasted the settings there. And then if I liked it, I said, well, it does probably need to be cropped. I could go to the crop tool and I could do a crop on this one like that. So something like that. If you want to get rid of the, um, settings from the clipboard, cause I could paste this a number of times. I could go to the here and I could paste settings, let's say. But let's say I don't want to do that anymore, right? Look what it did there, horrible. But anyway, hit this little X key. And I mentioned that I wouldn't include the crop. If you click this little gear here, you could uh, check what you want included on your in your copy and paste. I don't like to include the crop or auto settings, so I keep those off. Um, so here just do that before you hit the copy button so before i hit copy i could have went to this gear choose what i wanted to choose then hit copy then went to my next image and hit paste so that's just how that works it's very easy to use copy and paste in the cloud version of lightroom it's very obvious actually so um that's it really that's my workflow uh in the cloud version of lightroom i do uh, as much as like um like detail sharpening and stuff like that. I generally won't do that globally. I'll use masks for that. Usually my images will have a strong subject in them. I didn't have any today, but I would mask the subject and add sharpening to the subject typically. Uh, so I tend to not do anything as far as sharpening globally or anything usually I did here, but um, texture, and clarity, um, I would tend to not do that globally as much. I would, I would prefer to use masks uh, when using those type, those or applying those adjustments. There, I said it. All right, that's it for this video. I hope this gives you an idea of how you could, like you know, develop a workflow of your own when using the cloud version of Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.